Painting texture with watercolour can be a little bit difficult, but in this full length botanical painting tutorial, I'll show you how. Okay, so I've done a really simple outline here and we have a free line drawing and reference photograph to accompany this tutorial and I'll explain later how you can obtain these. This is how I trace down my drawings by printing out my photo, just scribbling it on the back and tracing it down with my 0.5 me mechanical pencil. Now you can of course draw your outline freehand, but it just means that you can press on with the painting process. So before we start, let's do a quick material run through. I'm using a cold pressed textured paper today and these are a selection of the brushes that I'm using and I will put everything in the description box underneath this video along with the paints and the colours that I've chosen are from the May Marie Blue set but of course as always use the colours that you have. I've chosen sepia, neutral tint, Mars black, burnt umber, imperial red and transparent yellow and as you can see I've swatched out a few mixes here. Um, burnt sienna is another colour that you can use if you have it within your kit um, but as I said use whichever colours that you have. So I'm using my really blunt spotter brush to do my first wash. Now if you are new to watercolour painting it's all about building up your layers slowly and carefully and getting through that tricky stage that you often get with watercolour. So if you are new to painting, I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see that tricky process unfold. My first mix is sepia and neutral tint and you can see it's quite a watery consistency here. And I'm also going to be mixing burnt amber with a tiny bit of imperial red here with a tiny bit more transparent yellow so that we have this kind of burnt sienna type mix. It's like an orangey brown and of course if you have burnt sienna within your palette then you could use that. Keeping my reference photograph on the screen here you can see I'm using my number five round brush here. This is by Da Vinci. I really like it because it has a fine point but you can of course use your spotter brushes or your fine line brushes that I often recommend for my tutorials. You can see that I'm working straight up to the pencil line with my mix of sepia and neutral tint and dipping between the other mix of the other three colours which of course is burnt umber, imperial red and transparent yellow and just working down the stem of the woody part like this. You'll notice that I have a small puddle of water on my palette here. That's to clean my brush in rather than flood the brush with water from my water jar. I'm cleaning my brush as I go through and patting it on the kitchen paper which means that I have a really damp brush to blend the colour in like this. If I had too much water on my brush it would flood the paper and it would just mean that my paint would just go everywhere. Keeping an eye on my reference photographs as I work through you'll notice that there's different tonal values and, va and colour variations as I work down the stem. Some of the tones have a more muted brown tone and of course the others have a more orangey red tone. And you can see me using the tip of the brush here to work around the small highlight. Don't worry if you lose your highlight down the centre of that twig as you work through because we can lift it out a little bit later. But for now, all we are doing is our template wash on which we can build that colour a little bit later on. As you can see, I've decided again to leave the reference photograph in screen. Um, I, did a, I did a poll recently and you all really preferred to keep it in screen as I work through. So that is what I've done for this tutorial. Speaking of reference photographs and line drawings, as I said at the start of this tutorial, we uh, free line drawings and reference photographs to accompany this tutorial and if you join our Facebook group you can have access to those for free um, and do consider joining us there over on our community because you can post up you can post up your finished paintings there and have some feedback from me and our other wonderful community members. But there's more. I've decided recently to start to put the line drawing in my community tab right here on YouTube which means that you can just go over to my community tab, take a screenshot of the line join and you can trace it down that way so if you're not on Facebook you can also join in with the tutorials. You can see me here, here using my flat synthetic brush to lift out an error that I made. This flat synthetic brush is a number two size and it's really perfect for sort of remedying any errors and also blending the paint. So once again, I'm using my number five round and I'm applying the orangey brown mix to the bud here at the top, leaving a little gap where that tiny little highlight is. 
cleaning my brush in my tiny puddle of water and with that damp brush just blending the paint into the paper. So the paper that I've chosen to use today is Arches 300 GSM and it's actually a rough texture. Now traditionally for botanical painting uh, people would use a sort of hot pressed or smooth paper but I actually really love this paper. It's quite robust and you can see it takes it takes a sort of um, it can take quite a few layers, so that's why I really like it. And once again, you can see me here dipping in between the two petals of paint to create different colours as I work through that twig. We don't want the colours on the twiggy part to be um, sort of one colour. We want it to look really natural, which is why we have our two petals on the palette here. As I approach the little fluffy section here, you can see me using my, the tip of my brush to create a little bit of texture to, to give the illusion of it being fluffy, which of course it is. Once again, working around that little bud and coming down at the side, work into the pencil line first. This little section here on, this, on the right hand side has a little bit more of a greyish tone so I have a, a watery mix of neutral tint here and I'm applying this once again wet on dry which means I'm applying the paint directly onto the paper without adding water first of all and once again working through trying to keep out of that highlight if I can the little highlight that you see at the sort of central part of the twig going back to that orangey tone where the other little fluffy part is working down like this Once again, working around that little highlight, cleaning my brush and my tiny little puddle on my palette. And with that damp brush, I'm just softening out that highlight like this. And you can see how robust this paper is. Were I using a hot press paper or my usual sort of mixed media, I wouldn't be able to get that sort of um, blend that I'm getting with this one because I'm being quite robust with it. Everything's dry, so I've cleaned up my palette and I have sepia and neutral tint going on here, this time in a slightly thicker consistency. You can see the texture that I have, the consistency of the paint here. So I've got two puddles, neutral tint and sepia, and the other one's got a tiny bit of burnt umber. Now this time we're focusing on our little, um, the heads of the pussy willow. Work in wet in wet. Now this means that we are wetting the paper to begin with before dropping the paint onto the paper. I'm going to be wetting each of these in turn. You can see me here just dropping in those colours as the paint sort of is drying on the paper. Notice how that paint has now a lovely, soft, natural sort of fuzzy look, which is kind of what we want for the Pussy Willow. I'm just randomly dropping in the paint where I think those darker areas are, and you can see it naturally splurging into that damp paper. The paper needs to be damp and not soaking wet and it does depend on the paper that you're using. But if you're using a rough texture or 100% cotton paper, you can just leave it for a few moments and let it settle in before you drop that in. And already you can see the shape of this Pussy Willow forming. I'm using the tip of my brush here to pull that pigment to the outside edge of the Pussy Willow to give it that sort of furry, fluffy look. The paper stays wet for quite a while, so I have a good few minutes to spread that paint where I want it to go. 
just by using the tip of a damp brush. The brush has to be damp and not wet, otherwise you will move your paint too far out and your paint will bloom. So just be mindful that your paper has to be the correct sort of dampness before you drop that paint in. And you can see, even now I can move the paint around. Once again, pulling out the outside edges to make it look fluffy. So I have asked you quite a few times whether you like to have the photograph in screen. Um, let me know if you find it a distraction or whether you would prefer it left um, where it is. Um, I'm always interested to know your comments and I do my best to, um, to listen to you all and um, do what you prefer. I've, I'd actually forgotten to paint this little bit here so I'm just using the brownish red mix to do that. Okay, so everything's now absolutely dry. We can start to create a tiny bit of texture on the Pussy Willow. I'm using the now slightly drier consistency of the paint on my palette because I mixed it a little while ago just to create a little bit more texture by using that kind of dab in motion with my number two size spotter. Just here and there sort of randomly doing this kind of wiggly motion with my brush to create this illusion of texture with watercolour. You could use any fine brush you have, and I always say this in my tutorials, use whatever colours and whatever tools that you have within your own kit because you will invariably have something very, very similar. However, I will link everything in the description box underneath this video if you want to take a look for yourself at the exact materials that I use. You can see me here on this dry paper, just pulling out bits and pieces, just pulling out my brush so that I can create that illusion of little fluffy bits of hair so that it looks really furry and really soft. So now that we have our sort of wet and wet wash dry, we can do this. But make sure that your paint is absolutely dry before you create this layer. And because the paint is now dry on my palette, it gives me more control. And I'm just continuing the process throughout the plant. And it really does help that the paint has now dried completely on my palette. It just means that I've got a little bit more control working in smaller areas at a time. Okay, so everything is now dry, so let's focus our attention back on the woody bark. Same colours as before, this time I'm going to be mixing them in a slightly thicker consistency, which means I'm adding a little less water. So you can see me here putting a tiny bit of sepia with um, the burnt umber, and I'm adding a tiny bit of Mars Black to One, Perial Crimson, sorry, Perial Red and Transparent Yellow to the other. So. One's actually merged into the other puddle as you can see. So I mix in another puddle here of Perial Red with Transparent Yellow. 
and we have a little bit of Mars black on the top there with neutral tint. I'm going once again with my number two size spotter. Spotters are brushes that have a smaller bristle. This one's from Jackson's and it's um, it's actually, I would say the equivalent to a number zero spotter. They are sort of slightly um, smaller, but you can see I'm working around that little highlight where the base of the bud is, working down the side of the bark using a mixture of the sepia neutral tint and Mars black on one side along with the more brownie red on the other. Just trying to keep it similar to the photograph as you can see, it definitely has more of a kind of orangey brownie ready tone in the middle. Keep in mind that highlight in the center, you want to be working around that and try not to lose it if you can. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. We can lift it out as we work through. Notice how I'm switching between the colors on my palette. Using the tip of my brush in a kind of coloring in motion to work around that little highlight as I work down the stem like this. Now, as I said at the beginning, watercolor painting is all about working in layers and you'll notice that every layer has to be dry before you work through. I have done a separate video on how I blend my colours and how I'll apply my paint and I'll put an information card on the top right hand screen for you if you want to click through and watch that after you've watched this video. I'm just continuing the process as I work down like this, dipping between the colours as you can see. You'll notice on the reference photograph there's a tiny little bud towards the end of this one but I've decided to leave that out just to simplify the process. Carefully working through bit by bit, switching up my colours as I work down the, the branch like this, trying to maintain my tiny little highlights. And this is a mixture of transparent yellow and imperial red just to add a little bit of vibrancy to the tiny little bud at the top. Notice how I'm working around those little fluffy areas around the top of the bud like this to negatively paint in some of that shape. Negative painting just simply means you're painting around a shape to create a shape. And again on the other bud on the other side just gently working around that highlight using the brownie mix with a tiny bit of the other colour on the side there. I'm not going to completely repeat the colours as I work through because you can see what's on my palette. Softening in those edges as I work through and just dropping in some of that little dark colour on the top. and continuing the process on the other side. Once again, negatively painting around the little fluffy areas on the Pussy Willow. The really wonderful thing about watercolour is you can take your time with it. It doesn't have to be rushed. And the this is kind of like a, a learn to paint as you paint approach to painting. So you're kind of picking up tips and tricks as you work through and creating a, a painting at the same time. 
you'll see me here adding the um, the transparent yellow and perial red mix to give that lovely sort of orangey yellow tone towards the top of that element and now we're going back to the darker element which is of course sepia neutral tint and mars black notice how the colors merge together because they're still damp and that gives a beautiful sort of natural looking um, organic feel to the sort of woody twiggy area here notice once again we have an element of um, neutral tint here it has more of a, a kind of grayish tone to it on that part just keep an eye on your reference photograph as you work through By working on smaller elements at a time, it gives you full control over your watercolour and always blend them through by using your damp brush. Ordinarily, I wouldn't use my water jar to do this, but I have run out of space on my palette, as you can see. So I've just used my number five round, just damp on the end, not soaking wet, just to blend those colours together with a plain water glaze. But do this with a really light touch because you don't want to lose the highlights that you've already painted in. If you are finding value to this video, do give it a thumbs up and you may want to subscribe to my channel where we have brand new tutorials every Tuesday. Not only that, if you're interested in botanical painting, we have a Patreon where we have a brand new full length painting tutorial every month, depending on your membership level, as well as weekly, weekly videos, blogs, vlogs, weekly videos, vlogs and podcasts. So you may want to consider joining us there and I will link it in the description box underneath this video. Plus it's a way for you to support my channel. Okay, back to the job in hand. Sepia and burnt umber. We're going to do the same mix as before, pretty much. So we have burnt umber and sepia in one pedal and burnt umber with perial red and a little bit of transparent yellow as before. And also going to do a pedal of neutral tint with a bit of sepia. So it's kind of the same mixes as before, but slightly thicker with a bit more pigment. Because now that everything's dry, we want to really start to build up the elements of the twiggy parts like this. Using the tip of my number two Jackson's, my number two spotter, once again, now going over the wash that we initially put in, enhancing those tiny little bits of fluff, bit, the furry sort of textured bit on the pussy willow, gently pushing my brush in like this, using a tap-in motion and dropping in the darker colour towards the tip and letting it gently blur into the existing wash. So you can see how I'm gently and slowly building up my layers as I work through, trying to keep out of that highlight as I work down the stem. And you can see how robust this paper really is. I think if I'd used my sort of favorite mixed media paper for this one, I wouldn't have been able to build up the layers as much. Mixed media paper certainly has its place um, for me and my tutorials. I absolutely love using it. But for this tutorial, I felt that I wouldn't have been able to achieve the texture that I have here, which is why I've chosen to use a rough surface for today's tutorial. I have painted over the central highlight as you can see here because I felt that it was a little bit too strong and I will lift it out a little bit later on. You can see I've gone outside the pencil line here so I'm just using my flat brush and then just patting it dry with some kitchen paper. So once again, working around those highlights, and as you can see, I've painted over it because I'm going to lift it out a little bit later. I felt it was looking too strong. But you can still see it there, sort of behind that darker element on the outside. Back to the number two flat brush. So this is cleaned in water, patted on the kitchen paper. And as you can see, I'm just lifting out the highlight that I lost. Just showing you how easy it is. Just gently rubbing that paint. No pressure at all, because you don't want to spoil the paper. 
and just continuing down the, down the twig like this and then just patting it dry. And you can see that highlight has jumped back into place. Really, really super easy to do. And I'm just softening out this little highlight on the bud at the top. So now we can start to build up the tinier details within the plant. This is my number two spotter, the same brush as I used before, and you can see now that this is dry, just enhancing some of the shapes. Pattern my brush dry on my kitchen paper, not to overload the brush with paint, and just gently blending that through with this kind of wiggly motion that I use. picking up that darker mix and of course just to recap this will be burnt umber with a tiny bit of um, either sepia a tiny bit of mars black or neutral tint it doesn't really matter as long as you have that darker element and that darker value as you as you apply it you want it to look darker than the color that you've already got on your on your paper Gently working down the twig and you can see I'm just adding a tiny bit of texture here with the tip of my brush. We don't want it to look flat. And you can see once again I'm working around those tiny little hairs. And I'm taking this opportunity to sharpen up the outside edge of the twig where I want it to look really sharp against the white paper. Pattern my brush before I apply it onto the paint onto the paper because I don't want to flood the watercolor paper with paint or water. Um, adding a little bit of transparent yellow here, I felt that the element of the wood where the pussy willow was sitting had this kind of um, more of a, a yellowy tone so I felt that was needed here and now I'm dropping in the mix of pyreal red with burnt umber as you can see once again it's blending beautifully and naturally into that color along with the darker mix to the side working around that highlight And still doing a little bit of lifting out and blending with, with my number two size flat brush as you can see. <laughs> 
just felt there was a tiny bit of a highlight there. I'm adding some water to my palette here, tiny puddle and using my number five round. I'm going to start to drop in a little bit more pigment to the Pussy Willow. Just giving it a few moments to settle into the paper and as I did at the start, dropping in some more pigment like this in a kind of random manner. We don't want it to look uniform, we want it to look sort of natural and splurging into that um, fluffy area as you can see, using the tip of my brush to drop in that paint. Just a tiny bit of that yellow tone here and there. And the same for the others. Just continuing this process. And this colour that I'm dropping in here is sort of, it's a mixture of the two darker tones that I have on my palette. I'm not being too fussy, just making sure that it's the right sort of, has the right tonal value, which means it's the right sort of darkness that we need just to give the illusion of that pussy willow being um, sort of darker in the middle. Once again, using the tip of my brush to create a little bit of texture like this. And again on the other side. and just adding some detail to the little bird at the top. Once again, working around those fluffy textures. Notice how the paint has dried on my palette, allowing me full control. And just using the brush in a kind of wiggling motion here. Just enhancing the shapes as I feel it's needed. and blending as before. Even on smaller areas, you can still use the same method of application and blending. You want your paintings to look soft, natural and organic. You don't really want any hard edges where they're not needed. So keep in mind that you want your paintings to look really, really soft and natural. And by using this method of application, that's exactly what you're going to get because you're working with small areas at a time. Something I need to mention about Patreon is if you do join us there for our full length botanical painting tutorials, and we do have different membership levels, um, the tutorials that we have over on Patreon are exclusive to my patrons. Just wanted to mention that to you. You will be getting exclusive content. So now that everything's dry, you can see me here just applying a little bit of detail around the base of that bud. <laughs> 
gently pulling down that paint, working around the highlights to give the illusion of texture on the woody element of the plant. So you can see that you can add quite a few layers of watercolour to this paper without it going muddy or overworked. When I say muddy and overworked, people sometimes ask what I mean by that. You can tell that you've overworked your painting because the paint will look really sort of sticky and muddy on your paper and of course it will start to lift off as you apply more layers. So it's really important that you apply your layers slowly and thinly as possible so that you can get the depth of colour that you need with watercolour. I'm using a simple plain water glaze here, so it's a tiny bit of water on my brush to merge those colours together. And just dropping in some of the other tone. At this point, of course, the paper is still damp, which is why the colours are merging together a little bit. I've decided at this point to add Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I've used this for a couple of tutorials lately and although you don't have to add the white element to it if you do have it within your kit it's something that I really really like to use to add a tiny bit more uh, zhuzh, a bit more detail to my painting. So going back to the mix that I have on my palette to begin with this is sepia and neutral tint and now that that paint is dry I'm just enhancing a few details here and there. If you don't have the, um, the bleed proof white that I'm going to be using in a moment, you could uh, use something like a white gouache or even Chinese white or some other white paint that you have within your own paint set. But I do really like this bleed proof white. Um, I've only just discovered it and I use it for tiny little highlights um, that are sometimes really tricky to negatively paint. And I did feel as I worked through this tutorial um, that I felt like I needed to add a little bit more detail to the Pussy Willow as I worked through. You don't have to use it, it's absolutely fine without. But at the moment I'm just adding a tiny bit more texture to the Pussy Willow using the tip of my brush as before, using the same mix, the sepia and neutral tint, or you could even add a tiny bit of the Mars Black. Okay, so I've got the Bleed Proof White on my palette here in a sort of thickish consistency and I'm using the tip of my number two spotter. So this would be any fine brush that you have. And what I'm doing, I'm just naturally painting in between the darker elements that I've applied to begin with, sort of to give it a bit more, um, a bit more texture. And this is really useful when we hit the elements like the bud or the bark so that it makes that sort of fluffy texture stand out a little bit more. As I said, you don't have to use this and I haven't listed it at the start of this tutorial. It was only as I worked through that I decided it might look really nice and just give the painting a little bit of a, a boost. You can see as I hit the, um, the little bark area there, it really stands out. And you can just add it between those little um, areas where you painted in that darker colour just to make it stand out a little bit more. I think it just gives it a little bit of an extra zhuzh. I'm using the same motion as I used when I applied the darker element, just to sort of 
flicky motion, a flicking motion, and as you can see, as I apply it near the bark, it really does make it stand out and make it look really fluffy and really pretty. Using a really light touch and just going over it here and there, just to add a little bit more texture. Just pulling it into the area where, where that wood is, where the woody bark is, as you can see. I'm also going to be adding it to enhance some of the highlights like this. And just continuing the process until the painting is complete. I'm going to stop talking, but I will put a playlist of botanical paintings at the end of this tutorial. So click through and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Do join in and post it over on our Facebook group so that you can have some feedback and show off your wonderful work. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.